Yeah, as we all saw, uh, we're very pleased to have selected uh, Colton Kowser with our first round draft pick this year, fifth overall. Um, Colton has been and is one of the best pure hitters in the country since setting foot on campus at Sam Houston, all American team USA uh, year after year. And um, this year put up a superlative line uh, for them showing power hitting for average uh, speed defense. He's a five tool player and he's somebody that we project to impact our team and our lineup on both sides of the ball, both offensively and defensively. I think it's rare to get those type of physical tools and uh, all five of them in a college performer like we just did. So that's why we took them. Um, it's a very exciting start to our draft. Thank you, Mike. With that, we will open it up to questions. Just a reminder to media to please enter your name in the chat if you have a question. And first up is Rock Kabako. Mike, when did you know for sure that Kowser was going to be your guy if he was still on the board? And how tempting were the high school shortstops that were still there? Yeah, we didn't know until after Boston uh, completed its pick what exactly we were going to do. Um, and, you know, you always wait for that. And there was always a chance that he was their pick as well. Um, you know, this was a and has been analyzed and written about as a, a pretty a good draft class, but uh, rather bunched up in talent from one all the way to 10 and, and 12 in the draft. You know, a lot of similarities and different rankings across different teams by those players. As you can see, there have been some surprises already in the couple picks since we've picked. Um, and, um, you know, we're still monitoring what's going to go on going forward. But uh, Kowser is a guy that we were very, very high on. Um, especially as the spring got going and, and the, the, uh, the surge in power that he was showing and the, the consistency at the plate. I think one thing that's just really rare with him, um, especially in today's game, is the hit for average tool and the power without striking out. He's an elite contact hitter. Um, he uses the whole field. And like I said, he runs and throws and plays center field and plays it well. Um, and he's just really uh, able to do it all. And, and those type of profiles are hard to find, especially with the, um, the, the certainty that an elite college performer provides. So, um, you know, that's why he was um, viewed uh, by the industry as a top of the first round talent. And um, we pounced on him. Next up is Rich Dubroff. Mike, how important is, uh, was the pick in that you, you again went for a you again went for a college guy for the third straight year. Uh, does that make a real difference to you? You know, picking a college guy over a high school guy. It depends on the players. I mean, you know, you, you do. We 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 have all types of data about the draft, and we study the heck out of the draft. And um, you know, these elite college performers over and over are surprisingly good when you look back at past drafts and it, you, you're amazed um, that they didn't go higher sometimes. Um, and that has continued to be a lesson of history year after year. And we're very mindful of that, but I've been a part of a lot of high picks. We've taken high school hitters many times with those high picks. We've taken college hitters. It just depends. And it depends on the evaluation. And unfortunately when you're picking Hi, you only get one pick because you like a lot of these guys and you have to pick one player. You can't take more than one home. So um, we got our guy uh, very pleased about that. But, um, you know, there were a lot of players in this draft and there's still a lot of players on the board that we really, really like. And we'll see where this goes next round. John Mioli, go ahead. Mike, you mentioned what Colton's done since he got on campus. How far back do you go with him personally? And, and what are your earliest impressions of him? Not, not very. Um, you know, he was on a, uh, I believe it's a Cypress Ranch high school team um, that now, now that he's gone in the first round, has had like four first rounders on the team, a couple of high school pitchers that went early. Um, so elite high school baseball in Houston, but he was young and skinny and, and not really a, a pro guy coming out of high school, even though he was on all state uh, as a hitter and then went to college and filled out a little bit and just started raking. I mean, this guy rakes. And um, it was a name that you heard right away as a freshman that um, was going to be an elite player in the country. And he's done that. And, and um, you know, he, he's gotten to this point with a lot of hard work and he's got a lot of uh, uh, projection ahead of him still. This isn't a, a totally finished product. Next question is from Nathan Ruiz. 
Mike, where do you see Colton playing defensively and, and what have you seen from him just in general on that side of the ball? Well, he's a center fielder and, um, you know, we'll, we'll send him out uh, as a center fielder this summer and he projects to stay in center field. Uh, obviously, we have a really good center fielder on our team right now. Um, but the beauty of that position and any up the middle position is you can slide around if needed and can't have too many center fielders. So um, he's a great defensive player in all three outfield spots. Um, but he but he can play center and and um, um, that's a big part of his skill set. Dan Connolly, go ahead. Mike, this is the second consecutive year you've taken a guy who's obviously highly regarded, but maybe not considered in the top five in the industry. Uh, last year it was done. There was an underslot situation to that. Is this an underslot situation in, in your mind? Um, and how do you see that playing out maybe throughout the rest of the draft? Well, look, whatever we end up signing him for, we'll sign him for. And, and obviously from the club side, you, you, you want to uh, preserve as much capital for the rest of the draft as possible. But you take the guy that you want to take. And that's what we did here. This is this was our player at, at five. Um, and so that's the most important thing, I think, for our draft and the way we've approached it wherever I've been. Um, but, it, you know, the, you, you do uh, work your bonus pool in this day and age, and that's what happens. But, um, you know, the draft is um, it, it's always evolving. Um, you know, just before I came up here, there were a couple picks that, that we weren't expecting. Teams have a lot of proprietary information nowadays that aren't available to the public and the media. And, um, you know, it makes for differences based on uh, what's out there. So, um, you know, I'm sure there'll be more, more surprises later tonight and we're going to be poised to um, be as aggressive as possible signing good talent that's still on the board for the next few picks. Joe Trezzo, go ahead. Mike, just following up on the surprises, um, you know, to us, the top four picks, it, it seemed like there were some surprises, but how, how surprising was it to you? And um, how many guys on your final, you know, five, like list of five finalists or, uh, were available when you guys were picking? Uh, there were a lot of guys left that were, were sort of in our, our finalist group, but we had cows are over them. Um, and, um, you know, so we took him, but there are other players that we would have been pleased with had Kowser been gone and we were at put the work in and prepared to take him. And that's just how it, uh, it goes. I was, I can't say I was surprised um, that, but uh, uh, you know, uh, Davis going number one to the pirates was not sort of the, the favored thing to happen all day. So it was like a little bit of a surprise, um, but I certainly get it. And I think it illustrates, um, you know, the value placed on these dominant college hitters, um, which, which he is. And it definitely, made for a little more suspense for the next three picks than, than we were already expecting, which was going to be a good bet. Next up is Alexis Brudnicki with Baseball America. Uh, hi, you mentioned um, kind of like working your bonus pool, and I know you already talked about the surprises, but how much work is done with your area scouts, cross checkers, whoever might be on that signability when you are looking for that flexibility? Yeah, I mean, the, the area scouts um, uh, do so much there um, because often what you're told um, isn't ultimately what ends up being the case, you know, with especially with high school players or junior college players, you know, their their number of signability number before the draft can change um, as the draft goes along. And so the scouts kind of having a feel for the situation, their instincts about how motivated a player is to sign or not it's it's just huge so um as we get going here uh, we feel uh, very well equipped to uh make some aggressive moves here as we go along but we got to see you know who's left on the board after tonight we don't have any more picks tonight and, and we don't start again until tomorrow if i may just quickly follow up on that um has it made any noticeable difference maybe not yet but uh with the um signing deadline being closer now with the draft being later on yeah, it's going to be weird. Honestly, I don't even know what the signing deadline is this year, but it's going to be really fast. So um, it used to be months um, and it just keeps getting shorter and shorter, um, which is good. I mean, we want these guys to get out and play this summer, if at all possible. You know, last year we couldn't do that because of the pandemic. Um, but, um, you know, we want to get these guys out and signed and hopefully without much drama. Thank you. Steve Molesky, go ahead. Mike, we hear over and over again, you don't draft for need. Having said that, Kumar Rocker, elite performer, elite conference for a couple seasons. Was that tempting? 
And following that up, did you see things from him this year that gave you any pause? Yeah, all these guys are tempting. I mean, these are really good players. Uh, as I said, it's a it's a it's a huge decision at the top of the draft. It's very tough. You know that there are going to be several impact all star big leaguers coming out of the pool of guys that you're selecting, and you're trying to do something to give yourself the best odds to get one of those. Um, and so there are a lot of players. I wish we could have taken seven guys this year, um, but you couldn't. You got to pick one. And yeah, we don't draft for need this, the draft, the baseball draft is very challenging on it. We try to just make a good pick. That's what, that's what our goal is. We want a, hopefully an impact player and um, the draft is fraught with a lot of risk. And so we're trying to get value out of these picks as much as possible. Um, and it, you know, it, it is a, a factor to us that one of the, the relative strengths on our big league roster right now is in the outfield. Um, but you look in our farm system and we have a lot of good pitchers. We have a lot of good infielders. We have a catcher in the farm system that we're excited about. Um, so again, it's, it's hard to worry too much about the composition of your current personnel when you're trying to make a pick. And as I said, with Colton Kowser, with him being a middle of the diamond player, he's going to be able to play in all three outfield spots and his bat's going to profile in all three outfield spots. So when he joins his team, hopefully in the next couple of years, if all goes well, um, we're, we're going to have some options there. Stan Charles, go ahead. Mike, uh, real quick, you mentioned that you thought he was a great defensive outfielder. Would you rate his arm as a plus arm? And who is a comparable to you uh, with Colton Kowser? Thank you. Thanks. I, I, I think that he has a 55 arm on the 2080 scouting scale. So we'd call that an above average arm. Um, I think some scouts might call it better than that. Uh, but I, I feel really good um, calling it that it's a real clean, technically correct, accurate throwing motion. Um, and it, it's an arm that should play in, in right field if he's ever playing right field.